Many people ask me if I'm a cat or a dog person. Now, I've been raised with both of them, so I've had experience with a lot. I've seen so many of my pets come into my house and leave my house. But if I had to pick one, I would definitely say I'm a cat person. Cats, to me, I like them so much because I can relate to them. Cats are such different and weird animals. Like, sometimes they're the most lovable thing ever, and sometimes they're the most grumpy, bitter animals ever, just like me. Uh, I love seeing my cats lounge and being able to relax, because that's the life I want to live. I want to be able to sleep all day or relax on in the sun, even though I'm not a person that really cares much for outdoors, but I've loved cats a lot um, and have appreciated them a lot more as I've gotten older. My family has a long history of caring for animals. Uh, my grandmother uh, worked for my grandfather, who immigrated from Peru, started his vet clinic, and my grandma became his nurse. But eventually, as she became older, uh, she saw the cats in her neighborhood and wanted to help them. And she can't do everything on her own. Uh, the cats, she. They are, they're on a hill, so she can't go down that hill when one of her plates go down, and I help her. Uh, it's fun, honestly. I really enjoy helping my grandmother with the cats, stray cats. And that's kind of inspired me to do the same thing. I started feeding cats about in... in in August, September, around that time, right before school, I remember that. Um, I definitely think that I learned a lot of my catness from my grandma, whom she has many cats and had many cats for a long time. Um, I, my grandma kind of taught me to like love and appreciate animals. And the best thing to do, the way to do that is by giving them a name. So, a good example of the cats in my neighborhood are Big Head, Princess, Tyrone, Brown Sugar. Those cats are all around my neighborhood. And Charlie. Charlie's a special case. Uh, he was a kitten I found on September 1st. And I decided that I was going to like, I was starting to feed them, the cats, earlier before then. And I don't know why I, I named him Charlie. Uh, I, I named him after Charlie Day, the actor from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Don't know why. I think I just saw, like, a silly little cat in there. Because this cat always wanted to play with this, this, these other cats. And they didn't want to play with him. Uh, they swatted him, told him to shoe, But I decided to play with him. Um, I treated him, like, as if he was my own cat. He was a beautiful cat. Uh, for two weeks, I played with him. And I had a cat at the time, but she was sick. And we wanted to give her the best however long she has left. But I kept worrying and worrying about Charlie. And on September 14th, I caught him. Um, now, he was a feral cat. A feral kitten. Feral cats are a difficult case for a lot of people. A lot of people are scared of them because they think they'd be attacked by them. Feral cats are scared of you as much as you are of them. Um, so when you see a feral cat, I'd say leave food, but there isn't really much you can do um, unless you want to lose, lose some money. Uh, my grandma, as I mentioned earlier, does help these cat feral cats in her neighborhood. Uh, she does something called TNR. This isn't something she made up. This is what vet clinics use. Trap, neuter, release. Uh, so it's not like you could just grab the cat and take him to a vet. No, you, you gotta trap him. Uh, I've used a raccoon trap uh, to capture them. And that's how I caught Charlie. Uh, he snuck into the raccoon trap, 
closed and then I brought him home. I had the room set up for him so he could start adjusting to the house life. And he adjusted in a day and that made me so happy. Um, if you see a feral kitten, then there's a higher chance that they will become, they could adapt to the house life way easier than a senior cat would. Now, a way you could tell a cat is a feral cat is if they have a abnormally large face, big cheeks. Uh, so that's where Big Head comes in. <laughs> As you can see, uh, Big Head has a big head. and I actually met him, I want to say, freshman year of my high school, or, or like a year or two before that. I saw him and he looked like he was about to die. He got out of a fight, he was, but he was lounging on my driveway. And I haven't seen him since until the September I started feeding Charlie. And, you know, I wanted to help him since he's an older cat, but I didn't know how to. So I just left food for him. And I feel like slowly he built a trust for me. One day he even followed me home. So when the winter season came, I closed him in my house. So ever since November 23rd, this is like right before Thanksgiving, he's been living with me. And now he is, I feel, turning into a house cat, which makes me so happy. Of course he's nervous still around people and my dog, but he's changed so much. And I feel like there's hope for all cats. There's not necessarily something I, there's not really an end goal to this. Like, it's not like I wanna adopt all these cats, Tyrone, Princess, and Brown Sugar. I mean, it would be nice if they would become house cats, but I can't have so many cats. I have four, five pets. Uh, as much as I want to adopt all of them, I can't. Uh, but, you know, if you see a feral kitten, I'd say leave some food. And maybe there's a chance that they would come into your home. Uh, I know I'm really happy with my feral cats that I've let into my house. Maybe you guys will be too. Um, if you want to adopt a cat, I wouldn't say go to a breeder. I mean, it's nice to have them as kittens, but there are a lot of cats in, uh, like, in shelters that definitely need a home uh, over like a breeder. I mean, I love kittens. Everyone loves baby animals. I got my cat as a kitten, not, but not because they were breeder. Uh, from a breeder, I got them because they were. They needed a home, and I'm glad that my cats were able to get love, and even the ones that aren't able to come inside still get a little bit of food to show that appreciation.